Dumb Decks. Hey, what's up, nerds? Hard Leg Joe here, welcoming you once again to Dumb Decks, the show where I look at Yu Gi Oh! builds that are interesting, but not really competitive. This time, we're looking at Super Ancient White Aura Turbo, brought to you thanks to Patreon sponsor Justin Spencer, who wanted me to make the best White Aura deck that I possibly could. Which proved to be quite difficult, because White Aura isn't really an archetype. There are four synchros with White Aura in the name, but they have almost nothing in common aside from being fish-type water monsters that can revive themselves from the graveyard under certain conditions. Other than that, there's two main deck fish monsters that have white in the name, two white spell traps that support fish, and a white trap that supports water monsters. Uh, even if all of these were useful, which they're not, we don't have nearly enough support here to make a full deck, which means we have to rely heavily on non-archetype cards. In this case, I decided to tuck all the viable White Aura stuff into the best fish engine available, Super Ancient Deep Sea King Coelacant Turbo, also known as Link Fish, or sometimes, Yep Fish. If you're unfamiliar with this engine, it's, it's essentially just this one card which was printed back in 2008. Its effect reads, once per turn you can discard one card and special summon as many level 4 or lower fish from your deck as possible. But their effects are negated and they can't attack. Uh, oh, also, you can negate an effect that targets it by tributing a fish. Oh boy. Uh, back when this thing was printed, the only extra deck monsters were fusions. So those four fish you summoned were mostly just there to tribute for targeting protection. Now that we have synchros, ixies, and links, though, those four monsters can lead to quite a lot of combos. In our case, we're usually trying to end on a board of Appalooza for monster negates, Dragite for spell trap negates, and a setup that lets us make White Aura Whale during our opponent's turn. Also known as Whale Force, this behemoth destroys all attack position monsters when it's summoned. Which means if your opponent hopes they can just like, you know, beat over your Appalooza, this can stop them. Depending on your hand or preference, we also have some other options, including two Trishulas for non-targeting removal, White Aura Dolphin, which can have the attack of a monster your opponent controls, Coral Dragon for targeted removal, and Bahamut Toad for Omni Negates. All of these can be made with ease once you get CeeLo Greenfish on board. The tricky part is doing that in the first place, because this has no way to special summon itself, and the fish support isn't much help either. The only consistent way I could find to summon the big fish was using this generic shenanigan enabler, Dugaris the Timeless. This is a rank 4 Ixie which can detach two materials to do one of three things. Uh, the only one we care about, though, is the second one. Skip your next main phase one and summon a monster from the graveyard. This allows us to get the kingfish on board, uh, assuming we have a way to get it into the graveyard first. Fortunately, that part is pretty easy thanks to this relatively new bit of fish support, Lifeless Leaf Fish. This thing sends a fish to the graveyard when it's summoned. And also it's level 4, which means it can be used to make Dugaris as long as you have another level 4 on field. Which is pretty easy to do with all the modern water support. White Stingray can discard a water monster to special summon itself from the hand. Tin Goldfish summons a level 4 from the hand when it's normal summoned. And Silent Angler can special summon itself from the hand if you control a water monster. Any of these three alongside the zombie fish is full combo. Which is why we also play the Tuna Princess. She can tribute herself to summon any level 4 or lower fish from the deck, which means opening with her is essentially the same as opening with Leaf Fish. So Tuna plus any of those extenders is also full combo. Summoner Monk is neither a fish nor a water monster, but it is also also full combo, assuming you have a spell in hand. It can discard a spell card to summon any level 4 from the deck, which means you can summon dead fish, send deep sea to the grave, and then you have the two level 4s you need to make Dugaris. That's why we're playing so many spells, by the way, so we have something to consistently discard with Summoner Monk. 
Most of these aren't necessary. They just summon fish from the graveyard or add them to hand. Uh, in, in fact, these two I'm only really playing because of their white aura support, and I need to make this seem like a white aura deck. Honestly, any spell would work in these slots, so feel free to run whatever. But yeah, going back to the monsters, more than half of them are starter cards, and the rest are essentially garnets that you only play so that you can summon them off of Coelacanth. Which is why the only spell I would strongly recommend is Moray of Greed at 3, because it allows you to shuffle your garnets back and hopefully draw your playmakers instead. Speaking of those garnets though, let's go over them really quickly. Royal Swamp Eel is a level 4 tuner, but it can only be used to synchro with other fish monsters. Oyster Meister, in addition to having one of the goofiest names in Yu-Gi-Oh, summons a level 1 token when it's sent from the field to the graveyard, meaning you get bonus material when you use it for Link or Synchro summons. Friller Rabka is a fish that can banish itself from the grave to negate an attack on another fish. It's not good protection, but one part of our combo can be filled with literally any fish monster, and this is the only one I could find that has a graveyard effect, so might as well put it in there. The rest are just different level tuners. They, they have effects, but they rarely come up. They're, they're mostly just tuners. Uh, once you get your king on board, you can use him to summon whatever fish you need to summon your favorite extra deck monsters. I'll show you my preferred combo here in a minute, but first, I want to talk about the only remaining White Aura monster we play, White Aura Monoceros. It's a level 7 synchro, and when it's summoned, you can revive any fish monster from the graveyard, though it can't attack this turn. This thing doesn't seem like much, but it's key for doing the most combos, because it allows you to summon back Coelacanth a second time and use its effect again. Because you see, while the King's Summon effect says it's once per turn, it's not a hard once per turn. Which means if you link it away to the graveyard and then summon it back, you can discard to summon another four fish, leading to some pretty long and complicated combos. Let's show one of them now. Alright, so we're going to start our combo by normal summoning Summoner Monk and discarding a spell. Remember that any any of our starting combos will work for this. Uh, in fact, these other two cards in our hand would work just as well. In this case, we're using this to summon Lifeless Leaf Fish, and this will send a Colasant from the deck to the graveyard. Now that we've got it in the grave and two level fours on board, we can use them to make Dugaris the Timeless, who can detach both of its material to summon the Colasant from the graveyard in defense position, for reasons, I, I don't know, restrictions. So then we're going to discard a card with Colasant, and this is where things get kind of tricky. What you really need to get is Fishborg Launcher, Oyster Meister, Friller Rabka, and Royal Swamp Eel. And when you summon them, you've got to make sure that your Royal Swamp Eel or your Oyster Meister is in this center zone. It, it's very important for placement, as you'll see in a moment. So now that we've got the four of them on board, what we want to do is link away our uh, Deep Sea Colasant and our Timeless in order to make IP Mascarena. Now that we've cleared a little zone, we're going to make White Aura Monoceros using the Royal Swamp Eel and the Oyster Meister. This will create a chain. Oyster Meister is going to summon a token and White Aura Monoceros will summon back the Colasant. And you want to make sure that you summon Colasant here, and the token has to be in this middle zone. It can also be over here, but the reason you're doing this is because we need to summon a Link monster using this token, so it needs to be in one of the zones that IP Mascarena points to. In this case, we're going to use the token to make Link Karibo, because you can't use tokens to summon Appaloosa, which is the next step, but first I should mention there's a thing in the graveyard we can activate, I didn't mention it before, but Lifeless Leaf Fish can banish itself from the grave to shuffle three fish monster back into the deck and draw you a card. Which is actually pretty nice, it lets you reset your garnet so you can potentially use this again next turn if you really need to. Uh, but yeah, we're going to use Link Karibo, IP, and the Friller Rabka to make a three mat Appaloosa, which is also immune to being destroyed by card effects. So that's three monster negates and protection. 
Finally, we just got the tuner, which we're going to use with White Aura Monoceros to make Risen Dragite. So there's your uh, uh, spell trap negation. And now that we have uh, three spaces open, we can use Colossant again. I want to use him to summon Royal Swamp Eel. Could also be this gluttonous thing, but you just need a tuner and you don't want to use a uh, fish borg. Uh, then we need any level four water monster. Let's just go ahead and pick Silent Angler. And then anything, uh, literally any monster. Let's just be, be Tunaful Princess. Why not? Summon the three of those. The effect is negated. Doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to take the tuner and the non-tuner and make Halkafibrax. And Halkafibrax will, of source, course, summon a tuner from the deck. And that's what you want to save the other Fishborg for. The Fishborg is here if you need it during your opponent's turn. You can summon Link Karibo by tributing the Fishborg. Only do that if it's an emergency because you could use it next turn for other combos. But yeah, this is the board we end on. And you may be like, why did we summon Hal and a fish? Well, Hal has an effect during the opponent's turn where you can banish it to summon a Synchro Tuner from the extra deck. If you choose Quandax, this is a level 4 Water Tuner, and during the opponent's main or battle phase, it can Synchro Summon. So you Synchro with that other level 4 you got, and that's how you make the White Aura Whale during your opponent's turn, which again, destroys all attack position monsters, protects you from being run over by battle. And, you know, assuming you do all this right, assuming you don't get interrupted, like, there you go. You could probably stop your opponent from doing just about anything. Uh, you're going to skip your next main phase. You have to go straight into the battle phase because Dugaris says you skip your next main phase. You should have enough because this is a double attacker that does piercing. You've got way more than 8,000 on board. But assuming, like, I don't know, they kaiju you or something, they leave something, um... Then all you can do if you want is just use this again, because again, it, it's once per turn. Discard this, and if you summon your other Oyster Meister, haha, uh, then you have enough to make the uh, giant Trishula using the tuner you have left over. That's why I like to save it. You can also summon the beautiful princess and um, get the other Trishula, the level 9, the original. Uh, I like doing this though, because it makes another token. And so now not only do you have that, but you also have Link Karibo. This floats into things. So you have a pretty good follow-up as long as you have Coelacanth. And of course we have a lot of spells and stuff that'll help you get Coelacanth out of the graveyard as long as you can keep a Link or something up. Now normally this is the point in the show where I throw up a replay that highlights how this thing can win. And I have a bunch of those replays, but it's pretty much the same thing that I just showed you. Except after I combo off, you get to see my opponent try and fail to play through that combo. That's part of what makes this dumb deck material. It's not bad by any means. In fact, this combo could probably stop most meta decks. But it's very, very linear, which means it's very boring to watch. You wouldn't want to sit for 10 duels in a row of me doing the same exact combo. The other thing that makes this kind of dumb deck material is just how easily it's stopped by a wide variety of common tech cards. Like, Dark Ruler No More just shuts this deck down completely, and you have no way to recover from it. Uh, it's also stopped by pretty much every hand trap in the game. You need four summons just to get the king on board, which means there's no way to play around Nibiru. Uh, Ash can be used on Deadfish or Summoner Monk, and that stops your turn. A uh, Valor or Imperm used on Dugaris is, is just a death sentence. And because it summons out of the graveyard, you're even vulnerable to things like Ghost Bell and DD Crow. If they, if they banish your one Colossant, it's over. Basically what I'm trying to say is, this is a neat deck to break out from time to time, but you probably don't want to make it your main. I mean, it's, it's interesting. It's this cobbled together collection of old cards and obscure fish support that somehow manages to function as a consistent and powerful deck in the modern age. But once you've done the combo one time, it, it's the same thing over and over again. And once your opponent knows what's going on, they will likely have some way to stop you. And your only real recovery or follow-up play is to make Bahamut Toad, which... I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not terrible, but it's rarely enough to win these days. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed hearing about this dumb little deck. Thanks again to Justin for requesting it. 
Give the video a like if you want to see more dumb decks. Subscribe for more goofy Yu-Gi-Oh! content in general. Or join my Patreon to support the show and perhaps suggest some dumb decks of your own. Anyway, until next time, good luck and have fun. <laughs>